So let's talk about your reading. I do think it's going to be a little bit of a challenging month if you are not doing the right thing, okay, Cancer? So please be careful. Okay, so we've got the Lovers and the Ten of Swords. So <clears throat> the Ten of Swords signifies a beginning, uh, I'm sorry, an ending to something. And this is a very, very major catastrophic blow to the ego, to the status quo, and it's something that cannot be returned to, okay? We have the lovers here, and the lovers is usually a third party interfering in a relationship, in a love relationship. It alone means that it's usually some type of a betrayal in love, in somebody that you really, really care for. And um, people say that it's a heart or head choice, and it definitely is. You know, like if you are betrayed by somebody, somebody that you really care for, do you stay with your heart and stay with them? Or do you think with your head and leave them because it's bound to happen again? So I feel like if you're dealing with this situation, you, it's, it's the final straw. I don't feel that this situation can be restored, okay? So if secrets are coming out from your end or their end, I do see some permanent walking away i do sense that um reconciliation is is very very difficult after the ten of swords so just be very very cautious about communication on the other hand in a more mundane sense i do sense arguments breaking out this month and i do feel a lot of it has to be surrounding like exes okay so third party interfering i do feel exes and and the huge influence like i feel like it's a stubborn ex it's not your partner that's doing this it's either a very very stubborn ex from um your side or their side and i feel like this stubborn ex has an inflated sense of ego and they won't go away. They won't accept the fact that you or your relationship partner is in a happier state. So they keep coming in and interfering. And I feel like it might cause a lot of discord in your relationship. With the Ten of Swords here, if you have been friendly, um, you know, sending friendly text messages or whatever to the ex, you might want to stop because your partner is going to ask you about it. Or if your partner finds out, they might be very angry. Because I don't, there's no need to contact an, an ex. And I don't feel anybody would want their significant other to be contacting an ex unless they have children together. And even then, the text messages should be very, you know, professional and um, platonic, okay? So I feel like something about communication, text messages, um, even social media concerning exes is coming through. And I do feel that for a lot of you, it might be... I don't feel like it's innocent, platonic, you know, text messages, messages. Um, I feel like a lot of it has like other intentions. So just be careful about this. Um, I do sense it coming through from both parties though. So, you know, can't, um, really try to be careful if you're on the, uh, receiving end of these inappropriate messages, okay? I don't feel it's completely innocent and platonic here. Not with the lover's card. It's rarely innocent and platonic. Um, we do have the devil here and the chariot. So I guess the best way for me to put this here is um, what I'm sensing first of all, and this is more of a message here, I'm feeling as if somebody walking in on somebody with another person, okay? And I don't want to sound fatalistic with these readings, but I do sense that's a uh, um, small minority of you. And I feel like it could be walking in when they're talking to the other person, texting the other person. I see somebody kind of like um, caught off guard and something slips out, unintentionally slipping out, okay? So be very careful with communication to exes or people outside of the relationship if that's something that you're dealing with um what i feel overall with this combination we do have the devil and the devil is usually indicative of some type of addiction it's something that we cannot break ourselves away from it seems to me more like a physiological addiction caffeine nicotine um alcohol even uh substance abuse and things like that on the other hand, it can, I feel more physical addiction. So, you know, food, uh, exercise even for a lot of you. I do sense this is a really good month for you to overcome these addictions, okay? If you feel like certain f addictions have taken over your lives and it's not allowing you, I feel like a lot of you might have kept this under wraps. 
And I don't know why, but I'm getting like uh, a lot of gym addicts, a lot of food addicts. And I feel like it has really interfered with your um, f your freedom of movement. It has really interfered with your um, your ability to really enjoy your life. And I feel like a lot of you, small minority of you actually, small minority of you, um, you might have like some type of personality disorders, I feel. You might be OCD where you try to control everything. And then, well, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's your fault because I feel like that is out of your control, but there are medications that can help you with that. Um, I feel like it's really, you know, in the process of having to plan every minute detail, I feel like it's really interfered with your ability to live life spontaneously and freely. So I feel like a lot of you are making progress in trying to rectify this situation and trying to fix it, okay? There might be food addictions. There might be nicotine, alcohol. Um, I feel very strongly it's interfering in your love relationships, okay? Your partner might tell you uh, to do things differently, try to find ways to curb the appetite, or try to find ways to break from these chains. If you are on route to doing that, I do feel a lot of you are going to have success, okay? We do have the chariot here, and the chariot usually, usually indicates that it's a lot, a lot of self-discipline that is required in order to pull ahead, okay? So the inner conflict needs to be uh, laid to rest so that both parties can move forward and move on to a, a safer place, okay? So addictions are being kicked to the curb this month. And you both have to try to, to be very, very determined in getting this situation rolling along. Now, in terms of your emotional state, we do have the Nine of Cups and the King of Wands. So the Nine of Cups, it's a card that indicates uh, wish fulfillment. It's a card about generally happiness. but So the Three of Cups is also a card about happiness and celebration, but you're with other people. This is something that might potentially be like uh, you're celebrating, but you're just by yourself. So there's a smug energy associated with this. There's also that overindulgent energy because it's one man in nine cups. So it's a mixed bag, okay? And what's it's, it's associated with here is the king of wands. So a lot of you are dealing with a fire sign. So this is, um, I feel, so this is Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. And this this person is in your life. Mainly because they're bringing you a lot of emotional fulfillment. I feel like they, they're very caring. They're very nurturing. They're very like, um, they know how to stroke your ego. They know how to say the right things, um, to compliment you. They shower a lot of love and affection on you. And I feel that this person really, really makes you feel good. They make you feel whole. They make you feel wanted and needed. And I feel like with a lot of cancers, that's what you need from a relationship partner. You need a lot of support. You need a lot of like men mental, like validate, um, sorry, emotional validation. You need a lot of emotional validation because sometimes you can be insecure and you need that self-esteem boost from your significant other. And I do feel this person is showering a lot of it on you and you feel like you're on top of the world. Um, there is a very strong emotional connection here. Okay. Once again, I keep going back to three, three, people like a third party interfering in a relationship a lot of you are making um are, are like you might want a relationship with this person and you might be pursuing it keep in mind it's the nine of cups it's on route for um there's just one more for the completion okay there's just one more so i feel like there's something holding you back it could be another person that you are dabbling with, that they're dabbling with. It could be geographical distance too, because I'm looking at the background and I'm looking at um, the just the images. And I feel like culturally you might be different. There's like a, a one last divide, but I do feel that the relationship can come together if you both work at it, okay? I see both parties like uh, very, very happy with one another. But no one is really taking a step forward. That's what I'm sensing here. So do something about this. If you've met somebody like this that really sparks your passion, go for it. Now, in terms of your finances, let me see here if I've talked about finances. In terms of your financial situation, we have the Five of Pentacles and the Seven of Cups. The Five of Pentacles is a situation where there might be some financial um, shortages. Okay, And uh, let me talk about this in terms of finance. 
you have a lot of you are thinking of ways in which you can overcome this financial hurdle a lot of you might have grown up in an environment or have been for the past five years bouncing around trying to find you know a good job trying to trying to find a job that has security or trying to secure a stable financial future for yourself a lot of you might have been doing odd jobs here and there and none of it really pan out and you're feeling as if you know this is just my luck i can't find anything that can really um that can really you know uh, be sustainable be dependable so a lot of you are at a point where you have not only like um not only are you dealing with financial hardships but you're also dealing with um like a, a crippling in your self-esteem i'm sorry to say but I, I feel that both of these cards together might indicate that um others of you might have resorted to less than um i guess like um honorable means to make money okay so doing illegal activities on the side resorting to the informal economies in order to make money and um you know we do what we need to do to survive okay to survive and um i i really i i can't say it any other way because this is not about admonishing you or chastising anybody about what they need to do in order to survive in order to make make ends meet but what i want to say is the seven of cups is a fantasy card okay and the fantasy can only last so long pretty soon it will um the reality of it will come crashing down so you want to be very mindful about what jobs you're doing and how long that's realistically going to last you and what are some of the risks involved with it okay so this is not a a, a, a criticism this is not a judgment call but it's more like serving as a warning so you know at what expense are you willing to uh, put up with for these very very quick and unreliable spurts of financial gains okay so just be mindful about that what i do sense as well is um i do feel for a lot of you and i know this is going to sound far-fetched if you are dealing with the five of pentacles and this is a very very rough situation to be in financially and i feel like most of us have all, all been there this is a rough financial situation it's feeling cast out feeling like you're on your last penny uh, and the advice I'm about to give you just wouldn't make sense. But this is what I'm feeling. Um, I feel like a lot of you are very, very resourceful and very intelligent. You're very intelligent and, you know, resourceful. And you once you find something that you love, you will do it and you will do it really well. And be, it's because you're a water sign. You work from the heart. So it's just a matter of finding something that you really, really love. Okay. And I feel like for a lot of you, if you are at this point where you're just like jumping around different jobs and you're not able to make ends meet, and um, if you're thinking to yourself, like, is there a better way to do this? Look into going back to school. Honestly, I know that's not helpful for me to tell you this because you want to make some money and you might be feeling very strapped right now. But maybe there's financial aid, maybe there's scholarship, maybe there's like stipend that can come through that will alleviate this situation. Because I feel like it, it's just a series of like bouncing around and none of them really panning out, okay? So the job situation, in order for you to get anywhere, I do feel look, at least do some research, look into school and see if that's something that you want to do. Because I feel like there is something here, like it's basically it's telling you the saving grace is behind you but you're not looking in the right direction you're training your eyes to look for all these hustles and you're not really looking at a situation objectively okay on the other hand i feel for others of you you're not going through so i feel like with the cancer spectrum it's either you're in really really good you know steed um financially or you are kind of like this feeling very very downtrodden and very worried about your financial situation others of you who are not dealing with financial issue issues where you are constantly uh losing sleep at night if that's not you what i feel is a lot of you are in trouble of losing a very very strong karmic relationship because of the wandering eyes okay temptation be very careful about that you're losing something 
very significant to you. You're losing somebody or the other person might be losing you because of the wandering eyes. So keep your partner in check. And if there are some suspicions, bring it up to them. So I feel like a, a significant relationship is being tested and somebody's sense of loyalty is being heavily, heavily tested this month. So just keep that in mind and try to act accordingly, Cancers, and try to do the right thing, okay? Now, in terms of your advice, <clears throat> first card out, we have the Wheel of Fortune. This is a card about uh, fate and, you know, actions and consequences, okay? I don't want to say anything else, but I, I do feel that's the situation that you're dealing with, okay? Um... What it's also saying as well is, and this is going to come as a relief for a lot of you who are dealing with um, financial worries. It, I feel like in one month's time, like around the time of July, your financial situation is going to get a lot better. You're going to have a lot more financial stability. It doesn't pr promise a financial windfall, but it promises more clients coming through more opportunities for savings. I feel like more work coming through as well. If you are uh, those type of uh, like seasonal workers, I feel more work piling on and you're going to have money coming in very, very soon. It says like July is, um, it's like the, the pretty much the gateway. I feel like a lot of options will start to open themselves up and you're not going to be in dire strait anymore, okay? So look for viable long-term solutions rather than short-term like temporary solutions, okay? Look for jobs that are a little bit more, you know, that if you're working like three months a year only and you make a lot of money and you're just like, I'd rather do that. And then the rest of the year, you don't do anything else. That's not a good use of time. If you're working, on the other hand, if you're working like 12 months a year and, you know, the pay is a lot less, which of course it would be, but it's sustainable throughout the year and there are other perks associated with being a full-time, you know, uh, worker as well. So aim for things that are a little bit more grounded because I feel like you're floating into space and you have some bills you need to pay and I feel like you're not making these rational decisions this month, okay? In finances and also in love because in the tarot those things are very intertwined as well so make rational practical long-term sustainable decisions in love relationships and also in your finances because I feel like with a lot of cancers one is always like causing problems in the other um, finances will affect love and love will affect finances I feel like that's usually the case with cancers so you know, something to think about. So the other aspect I'm seeing here is the Ten of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles usually indicates a lot of family expenditures coming through, like um, fixing a house, expanding a house, uh, people moving in, people moving out of the house environment, expanding your household base. So additions to the family, I feel like this is something coming through and you might be required to take on extra work. So I feel that's the case. I feel like a lot of work are piling on because people know that you're the best candidate for the work. So they're piling on not because of resentment or, you know, forcing, not because of like office bullying, but mainly because they feel that you're very, very suitable for the job. So I feel like you might be headhunted out of the blue and they might be giving you a lot of projects to do. And as a result, it is going to help your income generating potential greatly. Okay. So overall, it is going to be a good month for those of you going through that uh, financial hardship. I do sense situations are going to start turning around this month. I do feel it's going to be like around the 24th, the last week of the month, unfortunately, but I do sense something coming through. Um, I feel new jobs coming through. I do sense, see you sending out resumes as well if you're looking for work. And I would say do it the beginning of the month because after the 24th, I feel like some things will start rolling for you, okay? So do it the beginning of the, the month from the 1st to the, like the 20th or something. Take a break and then starting on the 24th, you will start to see things going your way. Things like um, coming full circle is what I'm, I'm feeling. Um, beware of picking fights with, you know, your significant other over their exes. If they have a tendency to do that, then I feel like it, it's important to be respectful if you just started out a relationship and it's a fragile, you know, new relationships are very fragile, okay? That's when we do all the intention setting for our significant other. That's when we learn to work together. So 
texting an ex or communicating with an ex unless you have children uh, unless like you have children i don't feel that's the best way to go and that's a good foundation to build a very new and fragile relationship on so just be very mindful about that okay